morning everyone. Uh, uh, my name's uh, Deputy Commissioner Brett Coining. I'm very pleased to be joined here today with Detective Superintendent Mike Nyland, who's running uh, Task Force Maxima, and of course uh, uh, Superintendent Jim Keogh, who's in charge of Task Force uh, Take Back. Well, ladies and gentlemen, yesterday uh, all uh, police jurisdictions in Australia uh, combined in a national day of action against criminal motorcycle gangs in Australia. All states and territories participated and it was a blitz uh, across Australia uh, to send a very clear message to criminal motorcycle gangs that Queensland's not going alone here, uh, that all jurisdictions are, are combining uh, through this National Day of Action uh, to rest assure the public uh, that we're taking this matter seriously and, and, uh, and doing uh, proactive enforcement but also to uh, enhance public safety through Australia. Uh, it's, my, uh, it's my intention uh, to read out the national results and of course uh, talk to the Queensland results. And there will be an opportunity uh, for questions of course. On a national level, uh, some 57 uh, members of criminal motorcycle gangs and their associates uh, were arrested. Uh, over 122 vehicles searched. Uh, 79 search warrants were executed throughout Australia. Uh, over 362 licensed premises uh, that are known to be frequented by criminal motorcycle gang members and associates uh, were checked uh, for compliance. Um, over 125 bail compliance checks were conducted. These are members of criminal motorcycle gangs who uh, have bail conditions or other con corrective restraints were visited by police throughout Australia. The types of offences related to assault, robbery, property offences, drug offences, firearms offences, traffic offences uh, and uh, other miscellaneous offences. Uh, in terms of Queensland, Queensland results, 11 persons were arrested, um, uh, 11 search warrants were executed, uh, over 238 licensed premises were checked, uh, there were 60 bail compliance checks uh, conducted in Queensland uh, and of course uh, that, uh, that means that the residents of these criminal gang members were visited uh, to ensure compliance with the orders. In addition, a number of actions were also taken uh, in Queensland Correctional Centres uh, with respect to uh, criminal motorcycle gang members or their visitors. Uh, as a result of that, a number of breaches were identified uh, and uh, Queensland Correctional Services officers uh, are taking action with respect to um, a number of uh, weapons located. Uh, there was also uh, uh, charges relating to willful damage to property within corrective services and there was a number of uh, positive uh, uh, urine tests which uh, 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 will uh, result in action down the track. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, this was very much a whole of Australia uh, operation, 24 hours of action where all jurisdictions were very keen to send a message to Triple Motorcycle Gang members that this very, very much is a national approach. Uh, now I'll open up to uh, questions. We get an idea of the specifics in Queensland. You broke down some of the charges nationally. What sort of charges did we see here in Queensland? Uh, those charges in Queensland very much related to. Uh, um, could, I, could I talk just in relation to uh, uh, two of the two lots of the charges? Uh, one related to the uh, uh, president of the uh, Gold Coast Bandidos. His. Uh, a search warrant was executed in Brisbane at uh, his home address. He was uh, charged in relation to possession of steroids. And uh, in Mount Isa, uh, the home of the uh, president of the rebels, uh, search warrant was executed up there. And uh, whilst, whilst he wasn't charged, three persons at that ad at address uh, face eight charges in relation to drug possession. Drug possession. That's correct. Yeah, it's, I think it's a very important point also that... Um, uh, the charges in Queensland related to offences all throughout Queensland, from Rockhampton, Emerald, uh, Burnett Heads, Gold Coast, uh, all throughout the length and breadth of Queensland. We've been collating the results uh, over the last hour and we'll be in a position later on to give everyone uh, more specific details of locations and details of arrests and charges. Was it very difficult to get the other jurisdictions on board or were they happy to, to come with it? No, this operation was put together very, very quickly uh, and uh, all jurisdictions uh, uh, were very, very keen to participate. Uh, high degree of enthusiasm, I think. Everyone acknowledges the, the problem with criminal motorcycle gangs is not Queensland specific, it's not Australia specific, it's an international phenomenon and uh, 
uh, all jurisdictions were very keen to participate. Would you say so Queensland spearheaded it? Sustainable then? Uh, look, the, the Queensland uh, certainly uh, initiated it. It came at the request of Queensland. We believe uh, that to be effective uh, in our job, uh, that it really has to be a national approach. Uh, and all jurisdictions were very keen to participate. Okay. Well, we've been assured by government that uh, very serious about the mission, which is to uh, eliminate criminal motorcycle gangs from Queensland. So we believe it is. We've certainly had strong support to date, and we're uh, assured that we'll have that support in the future. Yes, we've already been allocated an additional $20 million for both of the task force, and, uh, and certainly another $5 million was allocated to Crime Stoppers to encourage people to provide information that will uh, lead uh, to arrests of criminal motorcycle gang members and to uh, shut down the gangs. Across the country, how many additional police were put on yesterday? It's very, very difficult to, uh, to uh, collate just at the moment. Uh, and we encourage people probably uh, uh, from the media to uh, talk to their own jurisdictions in those states. Um, really this was a, this, for, from the Queensland perspective, it very much was a whole of service approach. Uh, there was an enormous amount of activity and of course uh, there was a number of uh, uh, different uh, protest rides that have been going on over the last couple of days. Uh, so really it was a whole of Queensland approach to this. So uh, pretty much, uh, whilst there's always core cool business, the focus over the last 24 hours uh, has almost all police in Queensland focused on this. Mick, can I ask you, what, what different clubs were targeted throughout Queensland? Well, the entire uh, 14 clubs in Queensland were targeted. CMG across Queensland were targeted. So every, every club with known links to you know, criminal activity? Yeah. Every, uh, every CMG in Queensland was, was targeted. And just on the, uh, the seriousness of the, the challenge, story position, Look, it, it, it was uh, most definitely uh, sending the message. Uh, another uh, uh, one was up in Toowoomba, a Patch Bandito member. Uh, he was found with uh, 20 grams of uh, amphet and he's been charged with uh, supply and possession. Uh, he was also located with uh, nearly $3,000 in cash. So, uh, it's, it's sending a message and we're going to take w what action we can, whenever we can. We've seen in southern states just over the weekend the uh, intervention of the Australian Defence Force with working with the police. Is that something we're likely to see in Queensland at any stage? Uh, look, that's a good observation. Uh, I've spoke to uh, Deputy Commissioner Fontana from uh, Victoria this morning. Uh, the military asset, which is in essence a crime, was uh, simply used because uh, Victoria Police had taken possession of a prime mover. Um, they did not have the equipment to be able to, to seize it, uh, so they used the equipment of the military. And that's we see that very common in Queensland uh, in a range of contexts, whether it's the disaster management context. We'd be in the same position if we were taking possession of uh, a prime mover or another piece of equipment. Uh, if we never had the, uh, the, the hardware to move it, well, then we'd, we'd probably seek to find those resources locally. If we couldn't, then we'd seek the assistance mm -hmm. of the military. So, I'm sure that's more about logistics rather than the blurring of Absolutely, yeah. a very much a logistical issue, uh, not a tactical one. Was this past 24 hours a first in terms of the scale of this operation in targeting bikies? Yes, yeah, certainly, the, to my knowledge, uh, in, in my uh, experience in the QPS, uh, we've never had a national day of action on crew and motorcycle again. So I'd expect this to be the first of many. Uh, all jurisdictions were extremely enthusiastic about participating in it. We know that often enforcement action does displace uh, criminal mo motorcycle gang members. We know that the highly mobile, highly agile, uh, you know, the, the uh, network of infrastructure in uh, Australia, whether it's airport or other forms of travel, makes it very easy for uh, gang members to travel uh, throughout the length and breadth of Australia quickly. So we know we need to attack this on a national level, and that's what we've seen yesterday. Is this split going to happen again you on to make this a regular occurrence? Well, we'll, we'll debrief this event and uh, over time and, and have a look at the, uh, uh, the uh, success of it. Uh, we'll analyse it and we'll get back together with our uh, colleagues from other jurisdictions and make those decisions. But certainly, um, I think, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, from our point of view, it's been a, it has been a success, and I think it sends a clear message to gang members uh, that just because there's a strong enforcement action in Queensland doesn't mean you can uh, find safe haven in other states and territories. And I think that's a very, very important message that, that uh, Australian police jurisdictions uh, are committed to working together on this. Jim, you're on the streets. Do you feel like there's a shift in power at the moment from where we were two weeks ago? Oh, most definitely, yeah. As you can see now, there's not so many uh, criminal motorcyclists out there on the street. Um, and whilst they've certainly gone to ground, uh, from what my colleagues have said here, you can see that there's been a number of other strategies that have taken place to address uh, the criminal act, act of uh, people behind the scenes. Just on that, um, do, you, do you have any intelligence or do you have any concerns that while they've been on the ground now, there's going to be some sort of greater effort um, by the clubs later on to make it combine to make the presence known? Yeah, look, that's something that I've considered, but I, again, with the strategies that we've got in place, should they combine, and you do see it from time to time, you'll see members patch over, you know, might be only a couple of them, and even if the clubs do combine, I'm quite confident that our sustainable strategies will hold us in good stead for the future. Well, it's not simply a matter of the task force coming, doing their job and leaving. This is a situation where the task force come in, implement new strategies, sustainable strategies, and remain until they're quite satisfied that these strategies will be able to look after the community, to ensure the safety of the community. So I can see these things being ongoing for quite some time, in particular the aspects in relation to the criminal investigation uh, side of things. Well, we're seeing, we were speaking about it before, we were saying that some of these bikies are getting fed up with all the attention and have just simply handed in their colours, is that, is that right? Yeah, look, I think to date we've had about eight bikies hand in their colours and walk away and some of them are indicating that this really isn't what they joined the bike club for. So, uh, yeah, that's a fair comment. Can we get a little bit more detail on the president of the Gold Coast, um, Bandidos, who has been charged with possessing steroids? Is that going to be enough to keep him off the streets, if, even if we do have compulsory bail introduced? Yeah, he's been arrested and charged, currently in custody, and uh, he'll face the Brisbane Magistrates Court on Monday. The issue of bail has been a topical one, yeah. and talking about this new legislation coming in, but would you say that the checks on the weekend, so there were 60 checks, um, have proven that they are living up to their bail expectations? Look, I haven't been able to collate the amount of breaches with respect to bail, but uh, we have seen historically uh, enormous problems uh, uh, with uh, recidivist offenders getting bail uh, in terms of uh, cracking down on CMGs and other, other types of crime. Um, naturally, we're very supportive of the change in the legislative regime uh, that uh, will keep people in custody of committed serious offences. Um, uh, so my apologies for not being able to give you the results of the bail uh, checks, but uh, uh, police often, on a daily basis, arrest people today who have uh, been released from bail yesterday. That's been an ongoing frustration for police. When, when you do get these people, you get them in front of a court and then they're given bail straight away. Do you think that these new laws that will be passed on Tuesday, do the police welcome them? They do. Uh, I mean, the police uh, are highly committed to the objective of, of eliminating uh, uh, criminal motorcycle gangs from Queensland and all other crime. So any legislative support that we can get, uh, particularly to stop recidivist offenders, in other words, stopping people uh, from offending who continually offend and continually uh, you know, victimise people, it, we're strongly behind. In terms of the corrective services operation, can you give us an idea of what police were looking for? I understand they were sort of given specific tattoos to keep their eye out for. Was it about gaining information as well as... Yes, every interaction with the criminal motorcycle gang is also obviously uh, has a degree of intelligence analysis with it. But very much we were looking for, uh, you know, uh, breaches uh, of, uh, of the law and we, we noticed a couple of breaches there of willful damage, also a couple of positive tests to uh, drugs that will <coughs> ultimately be analysed. Very much trying to uh, monitor the activities of gang members in prison because one thing we do know uh, that uh, often um, gang members uh, still try to conduct their illegal uh, you know, criminal enterprises from jail. So once again, sending a clear message that uh, even if you're in jail, you're going to continue to be monitored and uh, your activities, uh, criminal activities investigated. The weapons that were found, were they? what, what type of weapons are we talking about? Uh, homemade type knives in particular. Yeah, uh, you know, small uh, blades that are made from different materials that uh, 
into in any other language or not. Okay. And how, how are they getting drugs in jail? Any ideas? Uh, look, I, I, uh, I think uh, one thing we know about uh, people who are in jail, they're highly creative and uh, they find multiple ways uh, uh, of getting drugs into jail. Uh, sometimes that's through their visitors and that's why yesterday, uh, uh, you know, certain, based on intelligence, certain visitors were also intercepted by police. Well, look, we're very encouraged by uh, uh, the legislative reform package that we understand is going to the Cabinet during the week. Um, mm -hmm. Not appropriate for us to discuss it in detail because uh, it's yet to go through the parliamentary process. Uh, but uh, we're also tapped into the debate that's going on. Uh, we've also been consulted and uh, we're very encouraged by the, the, uh, uh, you know, the discussion around tougher laws. Well, uh, you know, one thing we do know about criminal gangs is uh, whenever there's an intervention, uh, they also strategize and uh, uh, they work with uh, professional people uh, to strategize how they can overcome, uh, you know, the changes. I think a good way of putting it is um, uh, criminal enterprises look at the risks associated with their behavior and they look at the rewards and they almost apply their own risk matrix. So our job uh, and our, our, our intention is to uh, disrupt these criminal gangs as much as we can. Uh, so uh, tougher laws, um, you know, a lot more uh, uh, you know, jurisdictions around Australia carrying out more enforcement action. Uh, we know they'll change their tactics and uh, so uh, um, you know, we, we do expect them to challenge the legislation in the, uh, in the highest courts of the land. Um, naturally, uh, we'll have to see what happens there, but of course uh, I think what you're seeing in Australian policing jurisdictions is, is law enforcement uh, changing tactics as well in response to uh, uh, criminal motorcycle gang activities. You three gentlemen have been in the QPS for a very, very long time. Have you ever seen anything like we've seen in the last two years in terms of focusing on outlaw motorcycle gangs? No, I certainly haven't. Uh, in my 36 years, haven't seen this amount of activity. But of course, we've also seen criminal motorcycle gangs change and morph into what they are today. We've seen uh, younger members, uh, members who uh, are not a heterogeneous group. We've seen members from uh, uh, all over the world. A younger group that's more aggressive, more competitive, and uh, you know uh, the time is right now to really uh, continue this enhanced effort because uh, it's a safety and security of Queensland that we're talking about here. Um, you know, this concerted effort we're putting in now is critically important uh, to making sure that criminal motorcycle gangs don't get a stronger foothold in Queensland and Australia.